Today we're making some beautiful Valentine's Day decor. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first little project is going to be a tricycle floral basket. I'm going to start off with this little floral basket. It looks like it came from Target originally. I've got some heart ribbon, some little heart ornaments, a pink and a red, some lace ribbon from Dollar Tree, and then this little hanging sign from Dollar Tree. There's that info. I have a block of foam and some picks. So I'm going to start off with this little basket by adding a little piece of cardboard in the bottom with a little bit of hot glue to keep the foam from falling all out on my table. I know how much I'm going to need to trim off, so I'm going to take my handy dandy knife here and just cut a chunk off. I would have used the other foam, but I'm running out, so this is, this is what I had, this is what we're going to use. I'm going to take these little pieces of plastic picks and stick in here. There's no wire in this part, by the way. I'm just pressing it into the foam, which it will not stay, and hot glue will just beat up and not work. But I'll show you in just a moment how you're going to secure these down to that uh, wet foam block. I'm just going to poke them into the foam for now, just getting their placement. And then I have these little pins, and I think you could probably get these any any craft store. And they are, I think, floral pins, or wreath pins, something like that. And I'm just going to press those down around where the, uh, the little stem part meets the foam. And this is going to lock it in place so it doesn't go anywhere. Plus, when you pull this out and you want to reuse those pieces for something else, you don't have a gluey mess, and you can use your pins again. I'm going to continue to add around and use pins for the pieces that do not have a hard stem to poke down in here. If I didn't have these pins, I wouldn't be able to use this greenery, and I really like it. Valentine's is still in the winter, so we can definitely use evergreen for Valentine's decor, I think. This is some boxwood I'm going to be adding these into, and they are actually on a hard um, a wire, so they'll stand up in there by themselves. I'm taking a longer piece to go in the middle because I want the top of my floral to be the tallest point, and then I'll just add in into the corners here and there, kind of going maybe one in the center and then one on each corner, that kind of situation. Work around until you have it looking as full as you like it. I'm just going to place them in, and then I'll be looking at this, picking it up, and looking at it from all sides to make sure I don't have any bald spots in there. A couple more pieces of greenery that are on picks, and I'm just poking those down in there. Like so. I like a variety because it looks a little more wild to me rather than all one type of greenery. Then I'm going to choose two of these heart plaques off of here. They need to be two that will fit together back to back so I can make a double-sided sign. So I'm going to use this polka dot one, and then the welcome sign is the one I was going to use, but it doesn't fit flush. It's not the same size. However, this XO is perfect. Matches up perfectly. I'm going to use a little wooden stick here. And it's, it's black. I pulled it out of something and I took apart. I don't even know what it came out of, but it's not wire. It's actually a wooden stick. I'm going to make this almost like a sucker or a lollipop. Put this toward the bottom, as far down as I can get it, while still having some stability um, with it. I want it to be two functions, one to stand it up and one to make it look like a big old popsicle or sucker. I'll add some hot glue then and kind of sandwich it in between. And because this is like a hard papery type stuff, you can press it down to where it's almost flat. And if you have something flat that's sturdy, use that instead. So there is going to be a little gap in the bottom. That does not concern me. Also, because it's wood, I think it gives it kind of a cheaper look. I'm going to take some of my Christmas red. It's a beautiful red. And I'm going to, it's either Christmas red or Cardinal, I'm not sure. You'll have to rewind and see. And then I'm going to go over all of my edges so that they kind of blend in and they don't stand out. And y'all all know how to paint. You don't need to see me do the entire thing, but you get the idea. Set it aside, let it dry. 
Now I'm just going to pick my foam up because it's not glued in there yet, move it out of the way, and I'm going to start embellishing the tricycle itself. I know that I want to use this ribbon in this project. It's all I had left from last year, and it's, it's really pretty and delicate, and I just think it's precious. Precious, precious for this project. You can use any type of ribbon you have. You can use your own tricycle. You can use a, if you don't have a little tricycle like this, you can use um, a truck, a little red truck. Um, whatever you have. If you have a basket that's not a tricycle, you know, you just take the inspiration from it. So that's kind of what I'm giving you. I know not everybody's going to have this tricycle. And I can't fit it in a medium flat rate box, so it's not like I can send anybody any of them in a giveaway, which is shameful because I get such a good deal on these pieces when I get them at dirt cheap. I can get them for like four for a dollar. And this was a three or four dollar piece. So I love those kind of deals. That's really probably better than thrifting them. Okay, so I'm just going to continue around with my hot glue so that it makes like a border or trim all the way around the top of the basket. You could also do the bottom of the basket if you would like. You want to make sure that when you close off your ribbon or whatever you have there that you trim it off nice and neat so you don't see any gaps or any misses in the pattern. And I think that looks good. And then I decided that it might be cute if we added a little bit of something extra to the handlebars up here. So I'm just going to take another piece of that ribbon, center it in the handlebar there, and glue it down. And then I'll just go ahead and grab the hot glue and go around each little outside edge with my hot glue. You could probably use a different type of glue and just clamp it until it dries if you wanted to. But the hot glue works great for this. And it's going to be inside, so I don't have to worry about it falling apart. And I do also use Gorilla hot glue as much as I can. When I run out, I'll just use whatever I have, but I prefer the Gorilla glue. And I'm not sponsored, by the way. Okay, so, so far, this is how it looks. Isn't that precious? Cute. Now I'm going to add some hot glue and go ahead and put my foam down. You can do this in whatever order you want. You could have glued it down and worked around it, but it just makes it a little more difficult if it's all, it's all in there, you know. You gotta move things out of the way. So now I can decide where I wanna put this sign because it is dry now. Decide how tall I want it. And I'm gonna work on a bow. Now y'all have seen these bows before. It's the awareness tag and then you squish it in the middle. Then you have your two loops and your two tails. So very simple, so simple. This is wired ribbon, but if you make your bows small enough and you don't use a big bow, having wire doesn't necessarily make or break you. So just use whatever ribbon that you like and keep that in mind. If you're gonna use a ribbon that doesn't have any rigidity, you're gonna have to use, uh, they're gonna be floppy. So just keep that in mind. You may like that floppy, shabby chic look. That's okay too. So I'm just using my fingers to fluff out the little ears here or the little loops in the bow. And then instead of doing a dovetail, I'm just going to slant these bows or these tails. I can cut off the back here because I'm not going to need to tie anything on. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and just glue it right to the basket. So this is in the back of the basket and I'm just adding a little bow to the back. And I think that is a cute little finishing touch for the back part. I want to put another one of those bows up there on that little sign that we made, or the sucker lollipop. Same process, only much tinier. If you have a hard time fluffing out your loops with your fingers when they get so small you can't use your finger in there, just use like a pencil or something and you can fluff it up with a pencil or a dowel rod. Just stick it in there and kind of floop them out just a little bit so it doesn't lay flat. Unless of course you're going for the flat look and that's okay. Again, trimming off because we don't need that, but you could use your string to actually tie to there if you know if you needed to tie something on, you could. And you see I've cut those tails short. I'm gonna trim them a little bit more. I don't want a lot of length on here. I just want this to be a little cutesy bow. I think that will work. I'm gonna put it right on the top of the polka dot side of this sign and press it in place. This is how it's going to look, both sides, XOXO and the little polka dots. Now I think it looks good with that red trim on it for sure. 
If your stem is too long, you can use cutters and just clip it off. I was trying to push through a piece of uh, foam uh, wire or something down in there, I think. But I got it. It worked. I'm going to take the red ornament because as doing this project, I decided that red would be more of the direction I went in. And I'm just going to use a little hot glue and glue it up there to the handlebars in the center, almost where a basket would be on a bicycle. And here's how she looks so far, but we're not quite done. Not quite. We're going to add some little red berries to this. These I pulled out of some um, stems. They had like a little bush and it had these little red berries all over it. I'm going to use these little red berries by themselves and just poke them here and there all over the basket. I think the berries give the perfect touch of red without being too much and I love the deep color of that red. It's, it's really pretty. It gives that little extra something to the greenery because it's not springtime. I don't want to add a bunch of flowers in there, but I like the idea of having the little red berries because again, it's winter and there are red berries on the bushes where I live. You add them to your little heart's content. You don't have to use these. You can use something else and baby's breath would be beautiful as well if you had some white baby's breath. Yeah, I think that would do the trick. You'll see it what it looks like in the end. The next project is going to be a Valentine's swag. Get ready, y'all. We're going to use Christmas trees from Dollar Tree, the white ones. I have some Christmas red paint, some white acrylic pens, a variety of ribbons. I have three here. I'm going to use some deco mesh in a red and white stripe. Scraps of, I don't know, greenery that I have and some baby's breath, some little hearts, and a big old red sparkly hydrangea. We're going to start off by painting these hearts so that they can be drying while we're working on the rest of the project. I gave each of these hearts, and there are, I think, nine of them. I gave them two coats of red. You can use whatever stickers, whatever kind of, you can use the felt hearts from Dollar Tree, whatever you have. I found a big bag of mine while I was out thrifting, but you can use whatever you can find for yours. So these are the trees outside of the box. You don't need anything for them but zip ties. Throw the rest of the pieces away or keep them for some other project. We're going to fluff these out flat on one side and essentially it's gonna be almost flat on both sides, but you want it to look like a tree though. You're gonna fluff it out, stretch it out. Make sure that you have equal number of branches on each side. Sometimes they're stuck together. So just separate them and then space them out so that they're nicely covered to both of them. I'm gonna take one tree and cut that tip down because they're very, very long. Then we're gonna flip the other tip over, twist it on itself to make a loop and that's going to be the hanger. So that is perfect when you're making a swag, right? Perfect. And it'll be invisible. All right, so now I am turning over these so that they're facing away from each other. And I'm gonna use zip ties to close them together. Now I'm not gonna put these right in the middle. I'm actually gonna put them in spaces where there are branches that are in the way because the branches are gonna keep them from sliding apart. It's just gonna give it a little added extra security while we're tugging around on here, putting stuff on, taking stuff off. Then clip off the ends because you don't need any extra. You can use pipe cleaners or floor wire if you don't have zip ties for that. And then we're going to do the same thing. Make sure that we have everything spread out nicely so when we part, start putting down our deco mesh and our ribbons, everything fits down and has something to touch. I'm going to take that deco mesh, which I think is 10 inch deco mesh, and I'm going to pinch the edges together. And then start on my left side. I'm going to push these down and I'm going to twist them in. Now that's that's up there on the top where you go all the way inside. I'm going to measure out 10 inches because we're going to have 10 inch loops on here. I'm going to squeeze them up toward the center. Flip it around to the other side of the swag. And then we're going to go down on the right a little bit. Now watch what I'm doing here. 
there's a gap right here where my fingers are showing you in the left hand. I'm going to hold that and twist the top. When I twist the top, I'm going to then twist underneath so it locks it in those branches and it won't slide back and forth. I'm going to take another 10 inch loop and do the same thing. 10 inch poof, I mean. And then I'm going to cross back over to the other side. It's going to be down lower. It's like a zigzag, so it's down lower. I am going to lock those two branches together on the bottom, hold them with my finger, and then twist the edge. If you were to put this deco mesh all the way up toward the center, then you're going to have deco mesh only in the center. We want this to spread out all the way across the width of our swag. So you need to be sure you're connecting it in the ends of the branches. So the same process here, I needed to leave that all in so that you don't miss what I'm trying to say here because that is important to the style of this swag. Once you get done with that side, we're going to come back down to the bottom. Another 10 inch poof. So we have four 10 inch poofs completely. You could use scrap, um, some scrap deco mesh for this if you wanted to. Totally fine. I'm going to put it over there on the other side and then lock it in. Then all you have to do is just trim this off. So grab your scissors, you can cut them at a slant, however you want to do it, and it will be just fine. Now we're going to start to kind of go back and forth with this red satin with wire, then our heart burlap with wire, and then our unwired red and white stripe ribbon. I generally like to use three, but you can use more however you want to do yours. You just do it however you like to do it. I'm going to bunch up the center of these, press it down just as we were doing the deco mesh, kind of locking it in, you know, putting it in the ends, locking it in, except on the top and the bottom, you could put it, you know, closer to the inside. But lock it down tight. Now I'm using two branches. Really, you could probably just use one branch and wrap it just with the one branch, but I don't want it flopping around. I want to stay nice and tight. So that's why I chose to do two branches and put those two, kind of lock those two together. So now we're going in the opposite direction with the ribbon. I'm not going to measure this, but this would be approximately 10 inches because it's going to sit right on top of the other poof. So when you pull your ribbon down and to measure it, to, to kind of twist it down, just make sure that it sits nicely on top of your deco mesh. It gives it a little bit of support and holds it up there. We're going to zigzag back and forth with this to the other side. And I had like just enough of that heart ribbon left. Isn't that crazy? Just enough to do this. I love getting thrifted ribbons, but the problem with it is sometimes that it's someone else's scraps. And if you're going to do a big project, you don't always have enough to finish. And it makes it more difficult for me to tell y'all how much you're going to need for each project. So I try to give you the measurements so that you can do your own math and figure out if you have enough scrap to use or if you need to go and buy something. But you know, I try to give you good options. Like you can get deco mesh at Dollar Tree, so that it is cheaper if you can't thrift it. You can get items on clearance. And look at these ribbons. I mean, this stuff, other than the one with hearts, is Christmas. It could have been used at Christmas time. So when the clearance sales happened at all the stores, it would have been a good opportunity to grab up some red and white stuff to be used for Valentine's Day and maybe even for 4th of July. So when you get back down to the start, just go ahead, get it tied down, and then cut off your edges. I'm not trying to hide them. I'll leave them down there just like they are. They'll be somewhat covered. If you find that in your wrapping, some of the little ribbons got a little gap in them, because they're not glued down, you can actually pull, like you see me doing there with that red ribbon that's a little bit floppy, pull that in each of the little joints where you connected it and have it sitting right back on top of the other wire. It's going to, well, the other ribbon, it'll give it some support. And that's the idea when you're using a ribbon that is not wired. Give it some support by another ribbon. You know, I guess you could starch ribbon too. I bet you could then it'd really be stiff. You could really use it for a lot of things in. But no worries now because it is all done. Got it all wrapped up. And this hydrangea is huge. I tried to stick it in this. It was just way too big for the look that I was going for. So I just cut it into pieces. 
I just cut it into pieces and we're gonna make tiny hydrangeas to go all over here. I'm putting a little bit of that thrifted baby's breath with it to make little bundles. And this is how we're gonna start off adding our greenery. I'm gonna start off with a little bit and then show you how you can make it, you can add to it more and more to your liking. I don't have to be told I use way too much. That's just my style, you know, that's just, that's the way I like it and, and you're not lying. I do use a lot in some of my projects, but it's not too much if it's something that makes my heart sing and makes me happy and brings me joy. So I just recommend that you do what brings you joy. At this point, you think that that's enough and you want to stop it right there, by all means, stop it right there. If you don't have a hydrangea like this, the ones that you get at Dollar Tree will work perfectly. You'll have to buy several though because they're thin, but they'll work perfectly. All right, so I'm gonna grab some of that leftover lamb's ear. I'm liking the look of this bluish green or this lighter green color um, in this project for some reason. I do like the darker ones and the other ones, but in this project, I think it's really pretty. I think it gives a good contrast. That red really makes that white and red pop. I like it. So to each bundle that we've already glued down, I'm gonna go back and add a little pick of the lamb's ear. Just to make it light, nice and neat. And I'm pushing it up through the foam as much as I can. Well, not the foam, the mesh, I mean. <laughs> and then I'm um, gonna do the same thing on the top and bottom. When I'm working on the top, I'm gonna push it inward. And when I'm working on the bottom, I'm just gonna push it upward. Um, if that makes sense, you can see what I'm doing. I do add a little bit more to the top um, that I don't think you see me doing. Get your spectacles on because we're going to be making tiny little dashes on these hearts. The reason I'm doing this is because the pattern on the ribbon that I used has little dashes on it. And I want to have little dashes so that it matches and it looks like it's all coordinated and that it goes together. So that's what I'm doing here. And the reason that I didn't use my metallic marker from Dollar Tree is because somehow or another, it looks like I've pushed the tip in. Um, I share some of my craft products with my daughter. She likes to thrift and she might've done it accidentally. So I don't know, I might have to get a new one, but this worked fine. Let them dry because this is paint. And then you can start putting these in. So now I'm adding hearts. Definitely do not have to do that. Um, but I like the look of it. I think it's sweet and it's romantic. And it looks so high-end. I know that word is probably overused um, with crafters saying that things are high-end and God knows I used it plenty of times myself, but I don't know a better word for it. It looks store-bought. It looks like it was made and that you paid a whole lot of money for it, right? I mean, in my opinion, that's what it looks like. So one to each bundle, and then I'm gonna add some to the wider parts of the wreath also and then two on the top, and then there will be two on the bottom. You can definitely glue your hearts down onto your greenery if that helps. And there we go. There's my other little heart kind of hanging off the bottom. Then over here in this side, and then there's another one going over in this side. It just kind of balances the look of it when you hang it up and you look at it. Now I've got some of this, I think this is called Dusty Miller. And I decided, you know what? I love the color so much. I'm gonna add a little bit more greenery. And I had just enough to add to each of these little bundles. Um, and you know, of course, on the top and bottom bundles as well. And I love the addition. It's, the texture is the same as what's on the lamb's ear. It's really soft and velvety like, um, you know, the texture of it, but the, Mm, the look of it is a little bit different. You know, the shape, the, it's different that way. And I like it. A whole bunch. I love this little piece. This is so pretty. It makes such a good gift for somebody. Can you imagine giving this to grandma or your aunt or somebody at the nursing home? This would be beautiful. Somebody who's sick, somebody who you love. You know, at Valentine's Day, of course, you could give it to your sweetheart if you wanted to. And I'm going back around now and adding another layer, just adding additional baby's breath here and there. It kind of separates the red from the heart and the red that is actually in the hydrangea that we used. 
So you don't have hydrangea, maybe you don't even like hydrangeas. You can use red roses from Dollar Tree, you can use white roses. You can use any dang roses you want. You can use uh, a different type of flower completely if that's what you wanna do. But the end result's gonna be pretty much the same. It's just a really pretty look. It's very different. So I tried to kind of uh, fold over some of these little pieces that are sticking out that I don't necessarily think is important to the design that we made here. So I just tuck some of those under, just bend them in half and push them down if you don't want them to show. But again, it is still winter time when we have Valentine's Day, so you could certainly leave the white there. And if you don't have the white ones, you can use the pink ones from Dollar Tree and do this whole thing in pink instead of red. Perfect. The next project is going to be the Love Wood Round. I'm going to be using my ruler, two rulers actually. I have two different reds. One of them is a lot darker. I have two flat paint brushes, one of these little wreath hearts, and then I have some wood letters. L, E, and V. I have a recycled piece of wood round here that is a 13 inch circle. You can use anything that you get um, that you already have if you want to redo it. Just paint it white, sand it off, or you can get the wood ones from the Dollar Tree. This one was already white, so I'm just going to use, start by using my tape, put my painter's tape over there. This is Dollar Tree painter's tape, and it works fine. In my opinion, it works absolutely fine. I'm going to start off by adding my red paint and I am going to be adding, I think I added three coats of the red paint. I did one coat with this flat brush and then I did the rest of the coats with a foam brush. It applied it a little thicker and I think um, you didn't see the streaks as much or the line marks as much. You can go ahead and use some Mod Podge and put it over both sides of your tape um, on each side so it keeps it nice and clean if you would like. Pull it off while the paint is still wet though. Make sure you pull that paint tape off. Then I'm gonna start on my white side. You can use the paint tape, put that back down on there and cover up your red. That way you have a nice crisp line or you can do it like I do it. And I'll show you in just a minute how that is done. Cause maybe you don't have painter's tape. What other things could you do? You really wanna do some crafting but you don't have all the tools you need. Well, you, that's when you have to be thinking outside of the box. I did do three coats here as well. I'm going to put down my metal ruler, scooch it all the way to the end of where the red is, hold it tightly in place, and you see I'm wearing my glasses there. And then I'm just going to gently brush this over that line because if you put too much on there, it's gonna bleed onto your red and you don't want that. While that is all drying, I'm going to use these letters and these little half rounds I'm gonna cover up the holes in these because I think they might have been something like, uh, I know they're used for crafting, but it might have been like letters for stockings. I can't quite recall. And I'm going to add those on here just to cover up those holes. I'm also gonna take one of those little rounds and put it in the middle of the heart so that it looks intentional, like it's supposed to be there, like maybe it's tacked down to the board. And then we're gonna make the word love. This is nothing new. People are doing this everywhere. I'm gonna measure down two inches to into the red section, two inches down, and I'm just going to use my wood rulers, my place marker. I'm gonna put down my letters, and then I'm gonna work on the ends first and add those back down. I'm gonna hold my ruler so I don't scooch it out of place, and this is so I can pretty much get it straight. Then I'll press it down. And then I decided, nope, I need to go right over there and grab that L. So that's what I did. I went to the L, glued that one down, and then I added my V and I added the little heart. And I just put glue on one side of the heart because one side will not lay flat on the project. The other side will lay flat. So the part that will be flush, I'm putting the glue on so that it will stick to the board right there and then press that down and hold it for a minute and that'll keep it in place. I like to use these electricity insulators, I think they're called, to hold down my craft projects because they're very pretty and they work, they're heavy. I have some 
leather string or leather whatever. I'm going to cut a piece off because this is going to be our hanger. And then the back of the sign, which you can paint um, or cover with paper, whatever you prefer. I'm just going to add down the string with some paper to hold it in place. Now I did look at the front to make sure that I had that centered so we don't hang it all wonky on the wall. That's how it looks so far and you could stop there. But I'm gonna add a really simple bow to the top. I've got some striped ribbon that's like a linen cotton blend. I have a burlap ribbon. We're gonna cut, cut these into seven inch sections and I'm going to do two of each one. After that, I'm going to dovetail them, of course, and then I'm just going to make X's one on top of the other. I'm gonna use my solid, stiff, heavy-duty ribbon in the back to help give it some body, my little soft ribbon in the middle, and my wired plaid on the top, or gingham, I think it's gingham. Really pretty red, very, very pretty dark color. I'm gonna squish them up in the middle with my fingers. That's what I'm trying to do there. And then once I have it in that shape, I can grab some jute or some thin ribbon or some floral wire, whatever you choose, and I'm going to tie it down. I always want to use a couple of double knots because when you fluff these things out, if you don't, you can pull the whole bow apart and you got to start over. And I'm not about that life. Nope. I like to be one and done. So I'm going to fluff it out. I'm just pulling them apart on the side from each other and I just kind of work on one side then the other and then kind of go back and forth until I get a balanced look that I like. Then I'm going to cut off the cord. We don't need that anymore. We'll save it for something else. And then I can just add that bow to the center, to the side, wherever it would look good in your opinion is where you want to put that. I'm just going to put it down right in the middle. And that is going to finish off that beautiful wood round. Stick around, I want to show you what it all looks like in the end. You'll get to see a good look of all of them. I would definitely put that on my door. Here are the three projects all put together. These are some beautiful, beautiful, I guess contemporary, somewhat rustic, romantic pieces of Valentine's Day decor all of which are intended to bring you inspiration and you can do whatever you like, change whatever you like on these projects. Are you liking red or pink or what colors are you doing right now for Valentine's? Do you even decorate for Valentine's in your home? I hope you do because guess what? I've got some old-fashioned Valentines coming your way. Some retro, some vintage, Victorian. So you better be sure that you're subscribed and you click the little notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos. If you're already subscribed to my channel, I want to say thank you. It means the world to me, and when I say it, I really mean that. The channel could not be what it is without all of you who watch and support, and it is so much appreciated. I would love to have you stick around if you are not subscribed. I don't want you to miss out on the fun. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.